What's up everyone? I'm Jesse Kazam. Welcome back to another Escape from Tarkov video. In this video, we're going to be talking about the find and raid flea market and just kind of giving all the information about that in one place. Um, I know a lot of you may already know how these mechanics work, um, but it can be a confusing topic for certain people. Um, and there was a lot of speculation about what it was going to look like before the wipe has happened. So now that it's happened, if you're confused about that, this video is for you. I do stream escape from Tarkov a few days a week. All my links will be down below. I'd love to have you stop by, say, hey, ask questions uh, or just hang out. But with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and dive right in. So since the wipe, the flea market has gone exclusively find in raid. So if you try to put something up on the flea market that you haven't found, it's just blacked out. You can't even select it. In order to gain access to the flea market, uh, you have to be level 10. Uh, so you can do that by completing quests or just um, having really good raids and killing a bunch of people, but you won't gain access to the flea market until you hit level 10. And you can tell if something is found in raid by the small check mark in the bottom right hand corner of the, the icon in your stash. Um, and that will reflect um, in a raid as well, because as we'll talk about in a second, you can even find stuff in a raid that doesn't isn't considered found in raid. It's a little complicated. Um, but it has to be found in raid in order to even put it on the flea market. Now, uh, the best way to kind of think about this is that anything that spawns in on the map before any of the PMCs spawn, that is found in raid. So anything in the stashes, anything you find globally in the loot or in locked rooms or on scavs or anything like that, all that's found in raid. But if you kill a player, anything that they brought into the raid won't be considered found in raid. Now, it's kind of... It's rough because I, I think it should be considered found in raid because you still you had to go into a raid, you had to risk your gear, you had to work for it. But the reason they're not doing this is so that it's not exploitable and people don't take advantage of that system and then kind of overrun the flea market, right? Because you could have um, you could have people squatting up together, and even if they just eliminate squads, it's fairly easy to get into the same server if you try hard enough. So uh, people can just kind of spam that, kill each other, trade items, and it, you know it would just it w it wouldn't be good for the game. So they're trying to combat that. So the reality is, whether we like it or not, if you kill a PMC, anything that they brought into the raid isn't considered found in raid. Now, if they looted some stuff and you take what they looted, all that's considered found in raid. That is totally fine. Another important thing to note is that as of right now. Uh, weapons uh, don't apply to the found in raid flea market. So um, any weapon that you find or buy, you can sell on the flea market. Uh, I'm not 100% sure why they chose to do that. Um, it, it feels like the same rules should apply. Um, and right now uh, you can attach anything to a weapon and then uh, sell that on the flea market. So even not found in raid attachments. I, I suspect that they will change that in the future. So definitely check that if you're watching this video in a few weeks or months. Um, but it is important to know that if you find a weapon that's pretty rare um, or anything like that, you can sell it. Or if you buy something off of a trader and you want decided to, you don't want that later and you want to sell it on the flea market, you can do that. It doesn't apply to weapons. Um, now, in order to keep that find and raid status, you have to survive the raid. And survive is not just like living and extracting. Survive is a status. So if you don't accomplish enough in the raid, you get what's called a run through, which is them saying like, hey, you didn't really participate in this raid all that much. You did a little bit and then you just left. And they try to discourage that. They want you to stay in and participate, get into some action um, if you can. So they've moved the requirements to get from a run through to a survive to you have to either have gotten 600 XP and you get XP by looting, um, searching things, killing enemies, um, XP bonuses for headshots, all sorts of stuff like that. Or you have to stay in the raid for at least 10 minutes. So they do give you options. So if you found something uh, really important that you want to get out, you don't have to go for combat. You don't have to loot every single thing on the map. You can kind of slowly work your way to the other side of the map and maybe um, you know, check the timer so you know, okay, you know, if the raid starts at a 40 minute timer, timer, it's you know, at, at 28 minutes, I've been in here for 12 minutes. Okay, let, I can extract. If you get a run through, you keep all the items that were on your person, but they lose their find and raid status. So you can still sell them to the traders or you can use those items for hideout upgrades or stuff like that, quests that don't require found and raid items, but you cannot put them on the flea market. They lose that status. Dying is the same way. If you die, anything that you have in your... Um, 
secure container, whether that's the alpha, beta, gamma, kappa, whatever, you uh, those items lose their find and raid status. So we've come across some unique situations where, you know, if you need find and raid morphine or saluas for quests, when you find those items, throwing them in your secure container is not even really worth the space because if you die, it loses that find and raid status. If you're going to use that thing, if it's like, hey, I could use another Salua, I'll throw it in there. And then if I die or if I get a run through and it loses the status, I can't turn it in for that find and raid quest. I'm still going to use it. That's fine. But it definitely changes up how our secure containers are used. It's definitely more, the secure containers are more about stuff that's useful to me as a character and less about just pure profit. Because finding a LEDX, you know what I mean, and putting it in your secure container is just a waste of that space because if you die or get a run through, it loses its find and rate status and you can only sell it to therapists for a fraction of what you could sell it for on the flea market. So knowing the value of items, but then knowing that you can use your secure container real estate a little bit uh, differently is kind of something to be aware of. So now once again, love it or hate it, that's the reality of it. Now, 600 XP isn't it really hard to get? If you kill one or two scavs, search them, search a few other things, you're probably going to be at 600 XP and you're going to be fine. Try to go for headshots on scavs because that is more XP. If you kill a player, you get even more XP than killing scavs. So it's not too hard to get. But if you are trying to avoid uh, combat, just wait in the raid for at least 10 minutes. Now, the 10 minutes one is easier to know because if you just check the timer right at the beginning of the raid, you know how much total time and you can be like, okay, 10 minus 10 minutes, now I can extract. The 600 XP thing, there is no indicator that lets you know, hey, you've hit 600 XP, go ahead and leave. Um, and it can be a little weird coming from the old system where, you know, I was looking for gas analyzers on my stream the other day. I found one and I just booked it to the extract because I knew that I needed one found in raid. And right as I was extracting, somebody in my chat was like, hey, you're going to lose find and raid status. And sure enough, I extracted, I got the run through and I lost it. It's definitely a mental shift. It's something we have to think about. When you get an item now, you have to make that decision. Am I going to go for some combat and uh, keep the item that way? Or am I going to wait and raid and make sure I'm in this raid for 10 minutes? So it's something that you have to be aware of. You have to keep top of mind. Eventually, it's going to be second nature. It's just how the game has shifted. But it is important to know that. Um, now, another important thing to know is that the find and raid status is achievable um, even without going into a raid. So they put in the patch notes that quest rewards um, from completing quests, anything crafted in the hideout, anything you get from uh, any future drops events, or anything obtained through the scav junk box when you craft that in your hideout, all of that is considered found in raid. So, you know, if you need found in raid car batteries, you can buy on the flea market a, you know, military tank battery and use that in the hideout to craft car batteries and they will be found in raid and you need those for a quest. So stuff like that, that definitely be aware of the crafts in the hideout. You can craft corrugated hoses in the hideout. You can craft uh, saluas in the hideout. So, a lot of the stuff that you might need found in raid is craftable or the scav junk box is definitely something where you can get a whole bunch of items. They're all going to be found in raid. Um, it's definitely even more of a reason to be doing your quests and to be checking the quest rewards because you're going to get items. Those are going to be found in raid. Um, so you can sell those items or kind of do whatever you want with them. When you buy an item from a flea market, it obviously loses its found in raid status. So somebody found whatever that is. Somebody found that uh, military tank battery they extracted with it. They got a found in raid. They put it on the flea market and then it loses that status now. So once I buy it, I'm not buying an item that I can then flip. The flipping things on the flea market is over. If you find something super cheap, you can buy it, but you can't flip it for more money and make profit on it. It loses that find in raid status. Also, if you go back into a raid with something that has a find in raid status, it loses its status. And that applies to keys. So if you extract with an, a really valuable key, maybe it spawns lead X's in there on shoreline and you're not sure if you want to sell it or keep it. And you're like, maybe I'll check and see if I can find a lead X before I sell it. Once you bring that into that raid, it's losing its found in raid status because it's something on a PMC that was brought into a raid. So know that you kind of have to, if you extract with the key, you have to put it in your stash and decide whether you want to keep it or whether you want to sell it um, kind of before you bring it back into a raid. So be aware of that as well. Um, so once it's bought or brought into a raid, it loses its status. And that's basically it. That's kind of how the founded raid flea market works. Like we said, there was a lot of speculation going into the front end and a lot of stuff they said that we weren't 100% sure what they meant. 
Uh, but that's it. We've had the wife for a few days now. Um, those are the quirks. It's definitely a new mindset. Um, anything that you buy from the traders is not considered found in raid, obviously. And that was a huge way that people made money was they would just buy something. You would you know, do a quest, unlock a new item from a trader, buy a bunch of it, sell it on the flea market. Can't do that anymore. So it's definitely changing the economy of the game. It's not, I said this in another video, people felt like it was going to be the, uh, you know, flea market apocalypse and there was going to be nothing on the market. There's still just about every single item you can imagine in Tarkov on the market. All the prices are different. Some things I thought would be crazy expensive aren't, which is super surprising. Some things I didn't think people would care about are really expensive. The economy has shifted and we'll see the ripple effects of this over the next few months, whether it's for better or for worse. And I'm sure BSG is watching that closely, but it has definitely shifted. So I hope that this helped kind of bring you the whole picture of what the found in raid flea market is and the all the things that you need to know to profit from it and to not um, accidentally do something you didn't mean to do. Thank you as always for taking the time to check out this video. I really hope that it helped. My goal is always to create content that helps shorten the learning curve of the game and gets you and your raids having fun as soon as possible. If you liked the video, think about giving it a like or subscribing for more content like this. Um, and uh, once again, like I said, I've got a Twitch, a Twitter, Discord, all those links will be down below. Thank you so much again for stopping by and I will see y'all on the next one.